I said it's only money. Oh, he ain't got it. He ain't got it. We done heard his time. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. I'm Treasure Wilson, aka Stat Baby, along with your host, Cam and Mace. And we have a special guest. So today we have Lenny Cook. Cook grew up in Brooklyn and quickly became the number one player in his class. During his senior year of high school, he played eight games and averaged 31.5 points and 15 mm. rebounds per game. Cook ranked higher than players like LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony. He also won MVP of the ABCD camp in 2000. He decided to bypass college and declared for the NBA draft after catching the attention of many people. However, Cook was not selected by any NBA team. He then became a free agent. Welcome, Lenny. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Lenny, what's up, baby? Yo, what's good, what's good, good boy? It good. It feels good. Good, man. Yo, I'm happy you made it, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'm y'all. happy you made it, man. For real, man. So man before start. we start, what do you desire to be called, Lenny or Leonard? They made Lenny Cook. I never, my name Leonard. You ain't never heard nobody call me that before. In the basketball world, you never heard nobody say Leonard Cook. Lenny. They they made me this person. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. fucked me up. Nowadays, bro, it don't even matter, man. It don't even matter. Okay. You know what I'm saying? As long as the presence is felt and the kids understand who I am, I'm cool. All right. So I have some questions I wanted to start with just to make it so everybody understand. What's your parents' name? My my <clears throat> my mom name is Alfreda Hendricks. My dad name is Brennan Hendricks. My mom is Alfreda Denise Cook, but yes. she married my dad, you know what I mean, who was Vernon Hendricks, and they in Virginia, Emporia, Virginia. All right. Did you grow up with them? Yes. All right. Um, another question. When you were in middle school, what did you think you would be? I didn't know. You didn't, I didn't know? know. I, didn't have, I had no idea, especially when it came to basketball. Like, I grew up. Um, I grew up in Lang City. I was born yeah. and raised in Lang City, you know what I'm saying? And I went to uh, Westside uh, Complex. Mm-hmm. No basketball, no nothing at so that your, time. So your family didn't care about sports pretty much? At all. At, at all. all. Wow, that's interesting. What you think, Killer? So what I wanted to ask you was, she just mentioned it. You played eight high school games? My really? senior year. Oh, my the senior, senior year. year. My senior year. How did you end up getting to New Jersey to play basketball? How did so, that happen? So once again, like we was in Lang City. Right. My dad was a big dope boy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, in Atlantic City, he used to run with... Uh, you know what's crazy? Not to cut you off, my family's from Atlantic City, too. My mom, that's right? crazy. Yeah, yeah. My family's from so Atlantic my City. dad was a big drug dealer in Atlantic City, you know what I mean? And my mom didn't want to live like that no more. So we ended mm-hmm. up moving from Atlantic City to New York to Queens. Right. And what I age was, is this about? This is like my seventh grade year, sixth, seventh grade year. Gotcha. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Going into my eighth grade year. Gotcha. Because uh-huh. I ended up going to I, uh, IS-59. Right. Yeah. And I played with Daryl Showtime Hill, High Flying Ryan Williams. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we ended up out there. And then when we left Queens, we ended up moving to Bushwick. Okay. In Brooklyn. Right. And that's when I went to Franklin K. Lane. Right. And that's when basketball... Became something. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? But how'd you end up back in Jersey? From after uh, all after Yeah, so what I'm asking is, you know, <clears throat> just picking up from, you know, when we met kinda because yes. I I knew I knew Lenny was when he yeah. was number one player and everything else. I was wondering, you have a you have a, a family, mother, father, mm-hmm. friends, whatever. How'd you end up with Debbie? Debbie. Debbie yeah. in New Jersey and playing basketball because for that town. That's when I moved to Bushwick. You okay. know what I'm saying? I was, uh, me, my best friend, Damani, and we was all in the park playing around, just playing. You know what I mean? And right. the guy, Jeff Farley, he saw us just playing. Right. And God bless his soul, Mr. Green was running the program, uh, the Long Island Panthers. He was the coach yeah. at that time. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So Jeff was like, my son played for this AAU team called the Long Island Panthers. Do y'all want to come? Right. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'll come, but you got to make sure all of them is good too. Right. So he brought all of them, Damani, Denton, everybody. Right. You know what I mean? Everybody that make that team. Gotcha. You get what I'm saying? So Debbie was close with Mr. Green. <laughs> It was really fun. I mean, him and Brian went to school together. I think we were in the gym at LaSalle, 
they did something really spectacular. And a couple of weeks after that, he just never went back to school. He just cut, 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 cut. And I caught him one day when I went in to get Brian and I just caught him and I grabbed him by the shirt and I said, I'm like, what the fuck, you know, you're, you're ruining your life. You, you have to go to school. Like Debbie taught me a lot of stuff like how to spend my money and how to invest in my money and all of that. It's cool to have a nice house, nice cars or whatever, but you gotta also learn how to spend your money wisely. So if, if I was to go to the league early, I would get her and her husband involved with my money to make sure I know what's going on as well as myself. I see it as she's seen something inside of me. Like she's seen that I could, I could go places and I couldn't even dribble a basketball then when I first met her. My house or go to Virginia and um, he, you know, he chose to come here. I mean, he asked me, I didn't, you know, he, he wanted to come. He seemed to want to change his life. And they, they was like best friends, mm -hmm. sort of, kind of, you know what I mean? And her son played on that team as well, you know what yes. I mean? And uh, so Mr. Green, he, the first tryout I ever had with Mr. Green, he said, nobody's in this gym good enough to make my team because he coached Shamika Hosklaw, Lamar Odom. He coached, he coached yeah. some nice ones. You he get what I'm saying? Breaks. So I'm like, eh, how you gonna say that when you ain't never even seen me play? Like, I'm saying this in front of all the kids, like, ain't nobody in here on my level anyway. You so you was always outspoken. No, nah, I'm very outspoken. Yeah. Very. Yeah. And I especially story, I especially I, when I know I'm right. Right. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, I was at Franklin K. Lane at that time. And where's Franklin K. Lane? In Queens. Okay, gotcha. Um, the, the high school was in Queens, but me playing with the Long Island Panthers ended up getting me a scholarship to play in high school at LaSalle Academy. What you guys, I mean, how do you guys feel about Bunny going out to New Jersey and getting in school out there? Well, I think that's the best thing he could have ever in his life, was to get away from the, the, the Brooklyn and the public school system and go to a private school where they, they, they pay more attention to him. He must have tried to the real. take days off. Yeah, he, he tried to take his days off every day and tell him, like, yo, I'm not going to school no more. I got to do it. No, you can't take the day off for what? Yeah, he need this, man. This is, what, this is what he worked for. He didn't, come on, all that three hours, four hours in the gym all day and you wasn't just giving up for that? Yeah, my man, go. We turn it out right there into a YMCA. And this into a movie theater. You're going to turn this into a movie theater? Yeah. Serious. Like yeah. Magic Johnson. Okay, you get what I'm saying? So once I got to LaSalle Academy, um, Brian, which is Debbie's son, they worked that out where if I go, he goes. Gotcha. So then my parents was ready to leave New York and go back to Virginia. And I didn't want to leave to go to Virginia. Okay, you know gotcha. what I'm saying? So my mom allowed me to stay with Debbie. And gotcha. that's how I ended up with Debbie. Did that relationship ever turn sexual? You give it to me. I'm, any other time you make the decision. No. You tell me. You tell me. No. All right. Let me be 22. No. I don't know. I don't know. You're giving. Well, how, how much you think? How much you think I'm gonna need to eat? eat Twenty dollars. I think. For the for the rest of the week. You don't, if they give it to you today for the rest of the week, you're gonna hit me up again. No, I'm not. I swear to God. Not until camp is over. When is camp over Thursday? When are you gonna hit me up again? Thursday. I'm leaving Thursday. <laughs> if he's willing to do the right thing, what he has now could be a reality for the rest of his life. That thing ain't never became sexual. Okay. Now, but with the daughter and stuff, it, it you fucked mean? the daughter. Yes. Okay. For sure. All right. We'll talk about it. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm actually, because you know, I see your doc in the situation <laughs> looking at you, and that's some, some, that's some, some people's dream to fuck a little strong high school nigga that may be getting ready to go pro. Yeah. So I had to ask them. I mean, I'm like, you know, yeah, you've been you been around. You know, you damn well know I know, nigga. <laughs> I was just saying to myself, but you explained that well. So basically, your parents granted you to stay with her and not go all the way back to Virginia so you could stay at least close to New York. No, it was because, like, where my parents is from, well, well my, my mom is from Virginia. My dad is from Georgia. Mm -hmm. But where my mom is from in Virginia, 
it would have never, I would have never had that light on me down there. You gotcha. get what I'm saying when it came to basketball. That's why we do things like this, you know, when he come home, we want him, you know, to know that, you know, we, we even though you're there and we're here, we still love you. He's sometimes not as friendly as he used to be when he was 15, but, you know, he's still, he's, Lynn is just a big baby. I just sum it up like that. He's still a big baby, but he's trying to grow out of it slowly but surely. So I, I begged her to like, yo, let me, my dad didn't want me to do it. Right. No, mm -hmm. I get it. We, but, was, we was just trying to figure out like, yeah, how, how did you stop get it? there? How did yeah. you, you get to that place? Because that was never explained. So yeah. let me just wonder about for that. Sure. Yep. You have any questions? Yeah, so you did touch a little bit on your dating life, but can you kind of go a little bit more into that? Like, how was that growing up? And especially everybody knowing that you were a top prospect, like were girls in the way, trying to get in your business? Did anybody try to take credit for anything that you did? That you nah, I was just fucking. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was running with the crew. <laughs> Like you said, word of mouth. I don't have to talk to you out here where people are going to see you. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Right along. Right along. This little young cat got so much game. <laughs> Where you get that shit from? I'm a grown ass man. Like, Cam been around me, you know what I mean? I was around the bros, you know what I'm saying? Gavin, all of them, they had me outside at a young age. But it came from me playing basketball and not understanding the politics of it as well, you know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't know everybody was watching me at the same time. Be nice if Lenny was here, right? Not here? They got tied up at the hotel. You know, we just kind of all kind of come individually in a way. Debbie. Okay. Walking in the door. Oh, they are? Get your fucking ass in the door. Get in layup line. I mean, I'm in a club last night at Rye, like 4.30 in the morning, and Lenny strolls right on by. He did? I'm like, oh, shit. I mean, he's out here with, like, one of his boys from home. He's like Foxy Brown's brother. And I'm just partying. I never expected to be around a Cameron or a Jim yeah. Jones or mm -hmm. I, nobody. You get what I'm saying? And that shit just happened overnight. I bust Lenny ass one day in 21. That's not right. a lot. I'm calling right <laughs> yeah, 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 for that. <laughs> Go ahead, Mitch. Get Lenny, your question. Get Lenny, your question, you can't man. beat you? Never. It was 21 and he had the lowest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm That's crazy. And he was number one at the time. I was like, I still so got it. I said the so this was at his height. He was number one, because I, I never met him. Yeah. Hey, brother, so I went to number one. I, I know I was kind of out the loop, because we're going to rap. In my block, 139th for Atlantic Avenue. I never played in Harlem. That's a Unless lot. it was 55th. Let's talk okay. about it. Hey, brother. What's up, Monday? We're on set live right now with Lenny. He said he never played 21 with me in his life. <laughs> <laughs> Did we play 21 or not? Did he win? Now, oh, no, that's Tom, the you question. just said we never played. And he never, you just and you said, never played you at all. You didn't win either. Did he win? You just said no, we you never said played. Me. <laughs> no, I said we played two. No, no, no. I had more than you. I said I had more than you. You said you never played. I said I bust your ass. You won. No, I said I bust your ass. I said I bust your ass. You said you never bust my ass. I said, hey, butter one. Hey, butter, hang up that phone, bro. Yeah, nigga. talk about it tomorrow. Nobody want to talk that real shit. I'm a threat. Now, if you're charmers, watch your fucking mouth, nigga. Watch your mouth. All right, butter. I you back. <laughs> now we had a yeah. good time, though, man. You said you never played in Harlem. I don't remember bullshit. You don't, you don't remember, remember that? I don't remember bullshit games. <laughs> somebody out here next year. I've so long, niggas forgot it. Number one high school player in the world, my nigga. I didn't win the game either, though, at the time. Everybody was still better than me at the time, man. So what role... Did DJ Clue play in your life? Because you be with you used to be with DJ Clue a lot. Like I'm still, still with him. That's my man I'm too. I'm still with him. That's what's up, DJ man. DJ Clue plays a major role in my life from right. then till now. You right. know what I'm saying? And right. it's nothing that nobody can say or, or do in front of me with him. Right. Like yes. he he was that 
he was that father figure that I needed back then, right. but he never tried to control what I was doing. You right. get what I'm saying? As much as much power as he had over me, don't get it fucked up. He had a when you say power over you, what do you mean? When I, when I say that is speaking as a father, like, no, don't do that. Okay, got don't yes. do this. Don't mm-hmm. do that. He could have, but yeah. he never did. He never tried to. He allowed me to be myself and do what I wanted to do. You get what I'm saying? So did he allow you to do good things or bad things? Both. All right. Both. You okay. know what I'm saying? And still to this day, to present day, like he's that person that never turned his back on me. You know what I mean? I had a lot of people that was riding me pause. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But this man never turned his back on me, like right yeah. now. You right. get what I'm saying? We just spoke on the phone just now outside in the parking lot. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like. He's one that never, ever shitted on me. Right. Yeah. And it's being that you said that, talking about Clue, shout out to Clue. Shout out to Clue. Storm, my niggas out there. Shout out to whole Queens. Being that you said that, I was watching, when I watched a documentary, it was a point in your documentary where you was like, I never did this shit for me. I was doing it for y'all. Yeah. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't care what about, I was doing it for, and talking to your childhood friends. Yeah. Meaning that you didn't really care about basketball. You was trying to, um, I'm just trying to comprehend what you were saying. You ain't give a fuck about basketball. You was just saying, I was good at it and I was trying to get us all out of here. So did you love the game or would you love the game for what it could bring to you I was, outside of it? At that time, I just loved the game because what it gave me. Number one of the nation, like dog. Said, That's the all time, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna end it at that. Playing. Number one of the nation. In the nation, at the time Not I was playing, in the I never, states, I never number one in the nation. Shit, I ain't doing it for me. I'm doing this shit because y'all want me to do it, and y'all benefiting off of it. I won't benefiting off of it at the time. You know what I'm saying? You didn't, you didn't love it. I ain't had a. I didn't love the game. I was doing it because somebody else say, "Shit, Lenny, you come play with me. I'm gonna give you a hundred dollars, and I'm gonna give you some joys." You know what I mean? I won't doing it because I knew this shit could take me and make me successful in life. I was doing it because at the time, you were telling me, if I come play for Riverside Church this weekend, you gonna throw me some money and give me some goddamn joys to come out next weekend. I wanted that, because my mama couldn't do it for me at the time. Right. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. For me, my friends, and my family. Right. You get what I'm saying? At that time, I didn't know the business. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? This is a business mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. And I just wanted what was for the moment. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying, I guess what I'm asking you is this. Basketball had a lot of opportunity for you. Mm-hmm. If it was something else that could bring the same money as basketball at that time, would you have done something else just because you was saying, I need financial stability for me and my family? I probably would have. Yeah. Gotcha. I probably would have. That Don't makes lie. sense. I probably gotcha. would have. Yep. So then what, what, what would you say outside of basketball, what would your dream life have looked like? I don't think I had one. You didn't have not that not not at that time and not not at 14, 15, 16 years old. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. Cause we were just roaming around. We were just roaming the streets. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have, we didn't say, oh, I want to be an architect. We didn't want to say, you know what yeah. I mean? Right. I, we didn't say those things. We yeah. were just going to high school mm-hmm. and whatever happens, happens. Right. So if that night, so if that night you was on draft night, right? Mm-hmm. If they would have called your name on that night, what would that night have looked like for Lenny Cook? New York would have been crazy. <laughs> it would have been like the Knicks won the championship. <laughs> right. You hear me? Right. Because I'd have had the stars out. I'd have had Cam with me. Yeah. I'd have had Jim Jones. I'd have had Clue. I'd have yeah. had Fat. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? It would have been crazy been because crazy. it was at the Garden. Yes. Right. My draft class was at the Garden. Right. So yeah. it would have been ugly. Right. Yeah. I wanted. I always wanted to know that because when I was looking at looking at you on the couch and things like that, I was thinking, who who's the first person you call? Clue. Clue is the first person Clue. you call. What is the first person that called me when I didn't get drafted? Wow, that's, real. that's you good. Know what I'm saying? That's real. Who's the first one to get a house? My mom. Who's the first one to get a car? My mom. All right. So look, in 2000, you was the MVP. Mm-hmm. At the ABCD camp. Talk about it. Right. Come on. Come yeah. with the shit. No, nah, I'm just telling you what Come I mean. on with the shit. You want me to get crazy? Come with the shit. Come on with the shit. I'm trying to be a journalist. Come on. Don't be that. Say no more. You fucking the MVP. And I ain't, I ain't, I ain't on no shit. I just want to know real yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Like, like, like how you feel. Because we never really got to rap about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like
You the MVP at the ABCD camp. Yeah. 2000. So you go back 2001. LeBron, Carmelo's there. I don't know who else Omar is there. Omar Stoudemire. Omar Stoudemire. Right. Raymond, uh, Raymond Chris Bosh. Chris Bosh. Right. Everybody. Everybody that's Hall of Famers. Right. Yeah, so D-Wade. When, when you walk in 2001, you already the MVP. I'm so, nigga, And I got my son with me. Yeah, so what's good? Mommy. Right. I got my son so, with so, me. So that, I know that Diddy Bop. What the fuck is going on in here? You know this is my house. When you get there, because we only seen the documentary yeah. in piece, bits and pieces. Yeah. We didn't get to really see the whole game and so on and so forth. What are you thinking when you get in 2001 and you hear LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony and all these people before you even start playing? Well, I knew Carmelo Anthony. Okay. Carmelo. You played already? You just played? Yeah. How you doing? I killed Anthony. Ready? I heard that. What's up? Who y'all play? You about to play next. Right here? Yeah. Who y'all play? I don't know. I average 34. That's what you gotta do. Who y'all who you playing with? Prep Y'all want? Okay. I knew Amari Stoudemire. Gotcha. I knew Raymond Felton. Mm-hmm. I knew Chris Bosch. Right. Never heard of this kid from Akron. Right. Kobe is Kobe, and I'm LeBron. You know, I gotta do what I gotta do. LeBron James, Jr. They haven't been the same Mary. Watch it. It's a dream to get a lot of attention, you know? Sometimes it goes to some people's head, but me, it don't go to my head. You gotta put your mind to it if you're gonna really wanna play this game, and you gotta work every day as hard as you can. How much you had? Huh? How much you had? I don't know. 15, 16, or something. Workout, huh? I will, I will. You too, baby. Uh, I'll be back there with you. Who that? That killed LeBron. He is serious. LeBron James. LeBron James. I played yeah. Carmelo my last game the night before. Mm-hmm. How much you gave him? I, I finished with like 27, 28. Yeah. Killed me. That's a yeah. nice night. Yeah, for the people that don't know, nice we night. just yeah. let them That's know. That's a nice night. It's a real good night. Yeah, real good night. I think of Carmelo Anthony. Is that the first time you played against him? Yeah. I think. Yeah, he's a good basketball player, but he was talking. He was talking a lot. Really? That's what I used to do when I was young. That's how I knew. That's how I knew I had more experience on him. I can get into his game because people used to do that to me. So that's how I got the better game. So, I mean, when he rejected you at the end there and then he got beat off that pick, and you, and you If you never got blocked, you're not good. Mm-hmm. I leave. I'm supposed to stay with the kids and the players. Right. I leave. Yeah. I'm at Planet Hollywood that night. I'm chilling. Where's the camp at? Philly <laughs> Dickinson. Dickinson okay, in Jersey. Jer- Jersey. So you leave Jersey. Just so for the fans that don't know, when you say you leave, yeah, you leave, I leave, Jersey I leave Jersey to go to Planet Hollywood to, that in night, New York. With my friends. Right. To party. Where's right. Planet Hollywood? At the time, that was the old. Uh, it's in New York. It's, it's in, in the New city. York. Yeah, it's oh, in the so city. you leave there, go yeah, to the yeah. city. So I go to the club that night. I'm chilling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, everybody talking about you got a big game tomorrow. You got a big game in the morning, nine o'clock. I had to play against this kid. Right. Yeah. All right, well, I'll see him when I get there. Right. Add him to the list. Yeah. I know what you're thinking. Another one off the hit list. Uh-huh. You get, you get nappy afro. You get nappy afro tonight, right? Who's that? The kid. LeBron. I don't play him. He's not in my division. When y'all gonna match up? Well, Timmy ain't gonna match up his whole camp. Probably in a playoffs. What team is LeBron on, you know? Sons. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon. I play LeBron tomorrow, 4.30. Figure you playing against some serious competition. Carmelo, you played the first game. You played against Lee in this game right here. Now, now let me ask you about this <laughs> game. How much, because my thing is this, just watching the highlights and so on and so forth. Yeah. I don't know how to can't win everything, but if he doesn't make that buzzer beater, does he become number one that year? It's impossible for him to do that right. and exclude that. Right. Mind right. you, if my teammate would have hit the two free, two throws, free throws before that, right. 
That Whether shot he hit that matter. shot or not, right. we would have won. Right. How would that would have panned out? Right. I would never know. Right. Yeah. But you would have remained number one. You think because his team won that game and he hit that shot, that's why he, they placed him above For him? For sure. Sonny Vaccaro made sure of that. Got you. So how much did you have that game and how much did he have? I think I had like 11. Right. I ain't had no great game. Like I right. said, I came from him. So what you saying is you played LeBron drunk and high and tired. And and shitting on him in the first half. Yeah. Yeah. With 11. With 11. Right. I'm cool with 11 in the, the first, first half. Off yeah. a drunk night. Oh, on a drunk night. Right. Talk wow. about it. No, but that's what I'm saying. People don't know that. Mm -hmm. People and people don't know that. See, that's why I said explain where the camp is in New York is because I would have probably did the same shit if I could go to New York real quick, <laughs> yeah. party, and then nobody know I could get back to Jersey without nobody knowing. Knowing, then mm -hmm. fuck it, I'm gonna do it. There's no social media. There's no. I didn't have none of that. No, it wasn't. No, none of us did. So that's what yeah. I'm saying. It isn't like somebody could have took a picture of you and been like. Oh, Lenny Cook's here or whatever. Yeah. You can sneak in and out and get back to camp. For sure. But we didn't know none of that. That's why I'm asking you the questions. So when I looked at it, they had you ranked number one. You lost that game. Mm -hmm. You went to number three. Who did they put number two? Yeah, I think Amari Stoudemire had number two. Okay, got you. Wow. I thought it was Carmelo. No, I think they had Amari Stoudemire at number two. Oh. Do you think that Sonny was on some bullshit for doing that? I think Lenny uh, felt after the game with LeBron that he was embarrassed a little bit because the 24-9 is definitive. That's obvious. Uh, he, he, the other kid's team won. LeBron's team won. That was more definitive, and he won in spectacular fashion. Everything was perfectly scripted for LeBron yesterday and not for Lenny. And I think that happens. Uh, it's, it's happened other times. Uh, he had his rooting section here. He had people from New York City. He is the crowd favorite here. 
And in his mind, I don't think he, I thought he played very well. I mean, in the normal circumstances. He had a good game. He did a lot of good things. Some of the shots didn't go in. That's the difference. Some shots go in, some shots don't go in. The last shot LeBron made went in. If Lenny's guy makes two foul shots with three, seven seconds to go, there's no chance for that game to be won that way. But that's what happened. I'm not going to say he on, was on bullshit. I just feel like he won with the right decision for him. You right. get what I'm saying? Like, it was a business move. Why you say but for him? But he lost. Why right. you say for him? Because it was a business. He did the Jordan deal. Yes. If people don't know that, he did that. That movie actually you just came out. Saying? Yes. But I knew that prior. Like, right. we knew that prior. Right. Because I'm just saying for our, for our audience. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, he's a businessman. He's about marketing. Mm -hmm. I wasn't marketable, clearly. You right. get what I'm saying? Because of my decisions. Right. I don't blame nobody but myself for my decisions. And at the end of the day... When I even when I was going to different teams, you know what I mean, for workouts or whatever. It was just about marketing and people didn't want to take a chance on somebody that wasn't reliable. Right. Yeah. At 17, 18, 19 years old. I see Shay, I see wow. you you was an arrogant motherfucker, man. Uh, July, you showed up ain't gonna show up in November, December, January. Yo! Over there. Over there. Over there. We need to talk after this. It ain't funny because I know some people in this line got here late. But they all standing around in bunches. Now either you can be a man with some responsibility, or you can act like a child and think you're gonna get away with it. If you got if you got your game right, you'll be over there. If you're perpetrating, you won't. We we go to the wave room. And I got it, but you look who I got it from. Yeah. I got it from a person like a cam. Yeah, no, I got it from I a person like a cam. I, I got it. No, you can't even put it the motherfucker. I just told him that earlier today. I told, I ain't gonna even name the network. I said, be ready in 30 minutes, or I'm not free again until October. And it's a major <laughs> network. Wow. Period. Exactly. So I, I dig it. I, I dig the Diddy box. But I, I, I got it at an early age. Right. These kids. They got it after they became millionaires. Mm -hmm. I had this motherfucking arrogancy in me when I was 16, 17, 18 years old. Right. And Cam gave it to you. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you gave Cam. me a little bit too. You don't know. Oh. Like you were a part of this shit. Because you, 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 you were the influencer as well. So don't say get it twisted. It's a generation. But I'm yeah. just saying, like, they, they got it. Later, like yeah. I was, I was flying G4s and G5s at an early age. Y'all yeah. got it. Y'all was doing it when y'all was millionaires. Yeah, right. So we was watching. You made it to the summer league that year, mm -hmm. two thousand three. Mm -hmm. You bought the Boston Celtics. Mm -hmm. You played all the games before Cleveland. All the games after Cleveland. Mm -hmm. No, Cleveland was the last game. Oh, so you played all the games. Leading up to Cleveland. Leading up to Cleveland. Why didn't they put you I in? I would never know the answer to that. What is? What do you think? I just feel like it has something to do with the chosen one. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Sonny Vaccaro, Nike, Nike, he wasn't signed with Nike yet. That was one of the biggest games I could have ever played in, I believe, myself. We played against Cleveland. Uh -huh. And they didn't play me not one second. And... Everybody that somebody was waiting for that matchup again. Me and LeBron. Yeah, yeah. And they didn't give me a they didn't give me no playing time. And I just sat on the end of the bench and after the game, LeBron came to me and was like, Don't worry about it, everything'll be all right for you, man. Right. You get what I'm saying? Sonny right. Vaccaro, that deal wasn't done. Right. Sonny Vaccaro and all of those guys had something to do with it. Right. There's no way. I averaged 24 in summer league, bro. Right. So before you played that game against LeBron, you were averaging 24 all the way up to that point. All the way up to that point in summer league in Boston. Wow. He didn't play. And I didn't play. My shit said DNP on the sheet. Who was coaching you? Uh, it was an assistant from the Celtics at the time. I can't remember his name. 
right. So I do have another question. So back to the camp, I'm sure you said you were arrogant. I'm sure mm -hmm. a lot of people were giving you advice, telling you things. I know one of those people was Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. Did he ever give you advice that you did not listen to? No. Kobe told me in that lecture, he leading up to what he said to me personally, mm -hmm. God bless his soul, when he said, but the main thing I want to tell you guys is don't put all your eggs in one basket. And what I mean by that is don't let people make the decision for you. Don't let people say, well, he has to go pro because his grades aren't right. Do whatever you want to do. If you want to go to Stanford, go to Stanford. If you want to go to Duke, go to Duke. If you want to go to the pros, go to the pros. Don't let them tell you what you can and cannot do. Don't rely on basketball for your happiness because it's not going to happen. You know how if you in church and the reverend or the pastor say something, you know they talking directly to you? Yeah. Murder. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When he was saying all the partying, all the girls, all the going out, that ain't it. When he yeah. was saying that to the, he was saying that to, to the, the crowd. Group. You get what I'm was saying? But he was directly talking to me yeah. because these niggas won't do that. Yeah. I was the only one doing that. Mm -hmm. So, fast forward, when he told me to my face, I said, when you gonna play me? He said, I'm gonna play you in various ways and I'm gonna beat you in various ways when you get to the league. When you gonna play me? I'm gonna play you in various ways. <laughs> Come to the league. <laughs> that, I didn't understand wow. that at that time. But 20 years later, I do. Because that's what I'm preaching to the kids now. What was he saying to you? Basically, like, yo, mentally, you can't do nothing with me. You're right. not mentally ready for me. So ain't no need for me to even get out there with you. So yeah. I see you when you make it, if you make it. Wow. That was deep. That that's was what real he was deep. telling me. So let me ask you this question, because I thought about this when I was watching a story. And I and I saw this, I saw, I saw, I remember LeBron walking down the corridor. He's going to play this game. Mm -hmm. He got this 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 black suit on, look like Tom Ford, some silk shirt, mm -hmm. the the pants. So just everything that just looked like, man, this is a GQ shoot. And I'm saying this to really add context to what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. And he's going out there to become the number one scorer in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I watched it. When I you're not, watching I this. I would not fall asleep until it happened. When you're watching this, what's going through your mind? Nothing. I just hope he do it. And I hope he do it in a fat, in a respectful fashion. And he did. You wow. know what I mean? His kids was there. His family was there. Uh, Jamar was there. Like, it, he went out in a, in a dope manner. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But... I got to witness that shit. Mm -hmm. When you say witness, though, what is the witness that you're speaking? I watched of? it. I watched it unfold. Mm -hmm. When I say I watched it unfold, I watched that kid become nobody to me, to the greatest basketball player ever to me. Everybody's talking about Leonard Cook getting, uh, you know, beat bad in that matchup. Well, we dropped him from one to three. I don't think that's any disgrace at all. I just think he ran into a better player. It happens in the NBA. You run up against Michael Jordan, you know, you're not going to be as good, right? I mean, I don't think you can go wrong with either player. And I think, uh, I mean, I don't think it's any uh, any doubt. Wow. Ever to you? Ever. Ever. He's the greatest basketball ever to me. You saying that shit because you played against him. Y'all your motherfucking no, mom, man. We ain't shit. better than motherfucking Trump, Michael brother. Jordan, man. Yeah, you yeah. got your damn mom, my nigga. Yeah, you got your, you got your damn mom, Lenny, uh, man. Well, I, I, I got Statistic LeBron number two. Pepsi Pepsi I'm Pepsi not going. I'm, I'm what not, are you going off? I'm going off a nigga who Lenny, says. Lenny. I'm going off a nigga who says. You know what? I'm too good for this league. I'm gonna try baseball. Oh, it don't really work out in baseball. I'm going to come back over here and come win three more championships in a row because I'm that good to come back and do that. With matter the fact, same team. Matter of fact. With the same team. With the team same team. You know what? He had already. Listen. Yeah. 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 with all of that Man, bullshit. This bro. is the attitude right here. This Listen is exactly what the fuck Listen we talking about. What, what, so what is your, you think is harder to get? Statistically. Uh, fuck let me tell you something. You out your motherfucking mom, Let me tell you another nigga. story. You out your I motherfucking mom. I transferred from Old Tepan High School mm -hmm. to Demarest High School. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Your boy Stephen A. Smith can't stand him. 
You hear me? Mm-hmm. Can't stand me. He did the article on LeBron James. It ain't about how many rings you win or whatever. They said this kid is going to be the greatest basketball player ever. This was before he even put a fucking NBA jersey on. He stood to that, bro. Who on said, and off the court. What the fuck are you talking about? Wait, wait, who said, wait, wait. Who, I'm trying to understand what you said. I know why Steve, you're saying this is the Stephen A. Smith. This was the slam, every article, ESPN, everything, bro. What's What's the marketing. What? What are you he talking about? To it, that's that's what I'm getting at. I, I, okay, that, that's why I'm saying this. Way to that. I know why you're saying this. You do. I do. I witnessed it. That's I know why, why you're saying, saying you witnessed it. Why? I do good at therapy. Talk I understand why you're doing Talk it. Talk about it. I need a little therapy. Yeah, you're saying that he's the greatest player ever because at one time you could say you're better than him. No. So that kind of puts you in that equation. It don't. It, I mean, it do, but it yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. But, but I it read don't. that. It don't because I mean, I'm, I, I always <laughs> tell the bros like, yo, at the end of the day, you never heard nobody compare it to Mike. You never heard nobody compare it to like coming out. They tried. You know what I'm saying? But they tried. I can't. I'm not even mean, gonna even sit here and argue with you about it because it ain't I, an argument. It's a debate. We no, no, no. What I'm saying is, I'm a LeBron fan. I don't want LeBron acting like, <laughs> like yo, Cam, you want some bullshit? <laughs> fuck with me. Nah, I'm fucking LeBron. I'm sorry. You know, I'm just a little older, so I'm in the Michael Jordan category. I, yo, me and this nigga. And remember, I get it. Yeah. My, look, he knows no, better. He knows friends, better. He but knows no, better. Some of my friends, they die, they Michael Jordan fanatic. Like they always tell me I'm bugging. Yeah. No, no. Why is it a fanatic when you say Mike like like he ain't Mike? No, bro. Everybody, I'm, I'm I was a Mike fan, bro. All right. I'm still a Mike fan regardless. All right. What I say, and listen, man, because you you know you might been up here. I defend a lot LeBron a lot, and I tell him murder. I said, Michael Jordan is still number one, but every year is just getting harder to keep Mike number one because of what LeBron's doing. Mm-hmm. Year it's in hard, and year bro. out, man. This kid is, is different, man. 20 years. And I get it. Everybody be like, Mike only played 15. Well, I, I get it. I get it. But at the end of the day, bro, them stats, they got to they gotta speak for something. What's the so, stat? Don't, 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 don't so just let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Do you like Draymond Green? I love him. Is his stats crazy? No. All right. So why are you talking about stats? Man, you don't make him great. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't say great. I didn't say Draymond, 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 Draymond Green is the all-time got the most triple doubles in Golden State Warrior mm-hmm. history. That's a stat. I don't know. Yeah. That's a stat. What that mean? I'm just trying to tell you because you said that's not great. I can say that great. That's not great. You spoke of stats. You said it ain't about rings. It's about stats. He got the most triple double in Golden State history, but in the world. But you act so. Let me give you a, a point. Uh, let me give Not you in the example. world. But listen, listen, nigga. Carmelo Anthony got two in his whole career. Carmelo's a Hall of Famer, nigga. He's definitely so a Carmelo nigga, Anthony so is one of the best scorers so that ever played the game. So don't, that, damn, that, don't, don't damn play triple doubles. You act like. What do you mean? You talk about oh. That's in Golden State, not in the world. It's hard to get triple doubles, my nigga. You can't tell me something on my show. Get the fuck out of here. You don't jump over there. You don't jump over there. Let me tell you something, bro. I would tell you something. You might have been saying too much, my nigga. You are your fucking mouth, my nigga. I would tell you something. Don't ramble on this bullshit. You are your fucking mouth, man. I don't want you to ever think. Swear. Carmelo Anthony is probably one of the best scorers that ever played the game. Absolutely. I agree with that. You know Who's the best? Saying? He was robbed Who's of rookie the of the best? year from LeBron. Who's the best? What? Who's the best scorer? Of all time. Like, yes. Yes. you can get yes. to this shit? Yes. Oh, we just talked about him, Kobe. Uh, Kobe's a better scorer than Michael Jordan? Kobe. Yeah, we might gotta get ready right in early, man. Let's get yeah. back to what let's get back to what yeah. we was talking yeah. about, man. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Let me ask you over there. Lightning is over there. Let's talk about it. Y'all old niggas gotta come to reality. You in your forties. Yeah. I just hit forty. You in your forties. No, but we both in our forties, nigga. You put your foot. I look younger than you. Yeah, we got your blush on, nigga. I love yeah, we got your blush on, nigga. You need some. You need some, nigga. You need some, nigga. You need some, nigga. LeBron put that shit on. LeBron put it on. Oh, yeah, I'm quite sure. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's exactly why LeBron is Star Wars and all that. Nigga, be a fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. he wears Maybelline. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you get a Maybelline check, too, nigga. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, though. Back, back to what we was talking about. So. 
like when you play street ball like Rucker and I don't know if you play Dykeman like and everything else. Dykeman and all of that. Yeah. Was you was you getting paid to play games? I did. Did you ever play? So I spoke to a couple people. Did you get paid to play for one team in Rucker, play for somebody else, I and did. they got mad at you? I did. And they tried to chase you or some I bullshit. Yeah. So what happened with that situation? And what, I mean, that situation, it, it went left because I was wrong. Okay, gotcha. You get what I'm saying? And right. I, uh, it's crazy that I that you brought that up. No, it was I, just random, like, no, you know, because no, it's, it's shit. the truth. Right. Yeah. It's the truth. Right. There ain't no faking in it. Right. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I seen my bro last year at the Knicks game, and we talked about it, and I told him to his face. I apologize because that was the first time I've seen him since. Right. And it was that. Gotcha. Now, so, somebody, we was nah, just talking about some bunch of shit coming up. It's the up. truth. Right. Let me ask you another question. If you had mm-hmm. social media back then. Boy, I'd be a millionaire still right now. Would you? So you saying social media would have been way more beneficial for you if it was in 2000? When you can do NIL deals and all of that? No, no. So let's go before, because NIL just kind of came. I was kind of new. Let's say. You had Instagram mm-hmm. or Twitter or something like that when you was in 12th grade before the NIL. Just yeah. Instagram, Twitter, and social media. Where do you think you would be coming out of high school if you had that those type of tools? I'd have had the most followers in the world. And why do you think that? Because I bust ass. Pause. Then you <laughs> <laughs> watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that was a lot. Yeah, that was crazy. What I do, what I for real. But what I will, what I will say, not the country. What I will say is this: you have a great personality, and if you're good at basketball Mm -hmm. and can make that all coincide, I think it would have been beneficial for you. But But it could have hurt me too. I'm about to tell you, it could have. I I said it could have been beneficial. I think it would have hurt you more personally, yeah, because of of your attitude at the time, of your arrogance, and not saying, like you said, we all motherfucking arrogant. Yeah. But you know, we looking at this shit, it was like, even when I was watching you talk to Gavin, you was like, I don't need no fucking ID to get on a plane. That was crazy. (laughs) I meant that. Yeah, we we see you meant it. I meant that. We was like, yo, what the fuck is he talking to? (laughs) Gavin was confused. Yeah, because he thought he was flying private. Yeah, like, what are you talking about? Oh, shit, you can't go nowhere. Why? You have no IDs, brother. I ain't worried about all that. How you gonna get on the plane? I don't never get carry ID when I get on the plane. On what plane you don't carry ID for, Lenny? No plane, nigga. Lenny, how you get your ticket? I always get a ticket when I get on a plane. All the time. I never use the ID to Lenny, get on the you're plane. You're bugging. You're bugging. Never. Never. From Kennedy, from LaGuardia, when I went to camp, I never use ID to get on a plane. And you need ID to get on the plane, yo. Never. Never. I don't know what plane you been getting on. You been no. getting on jets all your life, dude. No, I, I've been getting on jets all my life, nigga. You need an ID, son. Yeah. I'm telling you. Believe me. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, nigga. Never. They must have knew who you was and just handed you your tooth. Oh, that's Lenny Cook. Let him on the plane. So, I would say, just my opinion, I'm like, Social media, like for instance, think about uh, your man Mikey Williams. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. Mikey. Yeah, that makes, I'm, I'm new on high school. Makes this kind of schooling me to all the high school games, yeah. um, players and shit. But it's like sometimes they try to keep up with the rappers or mm-hmm. what's going on. Even John Moran, he's a pro. For sure. So sometimes it hurts you, and I think that you would have been doing too much on Instagram. No, I, and agree. Twitter. I agree. You know I agree. I agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if I had that following, that big following like that, bro, right. like I'm at 9,000. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just got a blue check. I ain't paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> My son called me like, Dad, you got a blue check. I'm like, where? Yeah. yeah. But like, it, I just got to 9,000 followers. But if I... I've, if I had Instagram back then, bro, my shit, I would have had like 10 million. Like, yeah, no yeah that would have been good. But crazy. like you said, it could have hurt me because of my attitude and my mm-hmm. arrogance and my immaturity. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Right. And I'm so I don't disagree with you. You would have still had that 10, though. So about the five recent 10. Yeah, you would have still had that 10. It was a question. I, Mace, Mace thought a question I, I wanted to ask you before mm-hmm. Mace, we possibly forget it. Excuse me. At the end of the documentary, um, 
Older Lenny is talking to younger Lenny. That was crazy. Right. That was so, crazy. Guys, I'll let you ask the question because no, he thought of the question. That was crazy. I was thinking at the end of the documentary, you see you standing there and then you see the the younger Lenny just leaning on a, on a post and you're there talking to him and you could see that they probably put you there. You wasn't there. But that was that was really like nah because crazy. at the end of the, the like that was supposed to have been me talking to my son. You get wow. what I'm saying? Okay. It was supposed to that that scene was supposed to be me talking to my son as yeah. a younger Lenny. You get what I'm saying? Twenty five sit ups, no twenty five push ups, please. Twenty five push ups. Yeah, yesterday it was twenty. So you the man? Hey, numbers, your numbers speak for yourself. But what, what, what are you gonna get out of it? Where you gonna be 10 years from now? How you gonna get there? You ain't doing nothing right now. The, the camp over there, you ain't doing nothing right now. Everybody else over there, you over here. You know what I mean? 10 years ago, had everything handed to me. The world was in my hands. You know what I mean? 10 years later, now look at me. You throwing your own birthday parties. You ain't got everybody around you that you had around you 10 years ago. You want to turn your head, act like you ain't listening. You'll find out the hard way. I've been there. I've done that. You don't know what it's like to get up, go out there at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning and, and running and working out because you want to be in the clubs, hanging out, fucking bitches, running around, doing what you want to do and not what somebody telling you to do. Yeah, you don't want to hear it, but it's the truth. I had that same attitude, you know what I mean? Then you're going overseas, you make good money over there, you can. But then when you get back, you're doing what? The same dumb shit you started doing before you left. You know what I mean? Then you're playing in bullshit leagues, ABA, CBA, USBL, shit like that. $500 a week. You make that at McDonald's. You might as well stay in the States. Work at McDonald's. To add the taxes, that shit ain't gonna come to nothing. If basketball all you know, that's all you gonna care about. From from what I'm looking at, you ain't got shit to fall back on. You know what I mean? Cause the, if you don't make it like you guaranteeing me that you're gonna be in the league 10 years from now, that money gone. You know what I'm saying? I know what it's like to get $350,000 cash money. You know what I'm saying? Go to Jacob the Jewelry, spend 10000 on a chain. That's the life that I lived with me and my homeboys. And when I was doing it, it won't no LeBron James, no Carmelo Anthony. They were still in school when I was in the clubs, playing in Hollywood, Club Cheetah. Uh, I, w I was really doing it as a child when these dudes was on the basketball court. You know what I mean? But it's cool. You know what I'm saying? Just enjoy yourself. You know what I mean? Think, think positive and stay humble. You know what I mean? That's one thing about me. I had fucked up. I got fucked up way still to this day. But I'm humble. I'm more humble. I'm more mature than I was then. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's what I'm trying to teach y'all young kids now. At the end of the day, be humble, keep your circle tight, and stay positive, and you can have anything you want. As long as you work hard for it, you know what I'm saying? But back to me, I ain't shit. I'm tired as a motherfucker. They did a green that. screen with me doing that. Gotcha. You get what I'm saying? Gotcha. But when I did that, it kind of touched me a little bit because I got to see myself talking to myself. That's yeah. what it did to me. Yeah. Watching. You know what I'm That's what I'm saying. That's so true. like it was like more so. I'd rather have been my son, so he can know for sure. Like, Mama, you can't do what I done. Right. Yeah. I don't want that for you. Right. You get what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, me saying it to the younger Lenny makes it look like I'm talking to the kids more so. 
You right. get what I'm saying? Right. Where it's though, like, I don't care how talented you are, it can be here today and going tomorrow. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Right. Let me ask you something even included with that. When you're standing over there and everybody is over there working out, why mm-hmm. are you over here? Because I'm that much better than you. I don't have to work out. I'm going to go get mine. So the coach never told you to stand over there? They can't. Not at that time. Not during that time. But if I could do it all over, I'd be doing push-ups. Yeah. So I got to ask, what's your biggest regret? I don't have none. I have no regrets because I never expected none of this to happen. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I'm right back where I started. So I ain't lose nothing and I ain't gain nothing. You know what I mean? For real. I mean, some people be more successful than others. And people take advantage of it because they got the right people in their corner. And I feel like from time to time, I, I really ain't had the right people in my corner. I just was motherfucking. And people that wanted to deal with me because of who I was, you know what I'm saying? And what I was doing. Not because they were really there for me, for me. Not even this show. You get what I'm saying? But I would definitely do shit different. Mm-hmm. But I have no regrets. Because I would have never met Meese. I would have never met Cam. I would have never met Clue. I would have never met Fab. I would have never met Gavin. I would have never had these kids that I have. So I have no regrets on none of the shit that I've done. But I would definitely do shit different. Okay. Nice enough, man. So when you, and, and the, the more I hear you speak, the more I have even more and more questions because I'm looking at your life like from a from a fan perspective, looking at it, looking at your life just unravel in front of the world on that camera. And what's coming to me is that each step of the way you would act successful and it wasn't even something you wanted to do. That'd be helps because every decision I made, I made on my own. Debbie didn't help me make no decisions. You know what I mean? She wanted she wanted the best for me. And she was like Whatever makes me happy, do. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, and I felt like when the agent that came, the agent that came to me, he came to me with a big lump sum of money, and I took it. You know what I'm saying? Which any kid at 17 would have done, coming from what I came from. You know what I mean? Three hundred fifty thousand dollars, a lot of money, cash money. You know what I'm saying? So I jumped on it. You know what I mean? I, I took care of my mom, my family, my brothers, my sisters. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> it was just something that I always dreamed about, you know what I mean? So I wasn't going to turn it down. The limo came in the morning. I was supposed to have been going to school, and I didn't go to school. And I, just... I never expected it. Mm-hmm. I never expected it. So I was just playing. This came from him. This, uh, this thing, I didn't put the work in. It ain't yeah. like I put the work in on a day-to-day basis. This mm-hmm. is a gift that I was given. You so do, do you think that's why it was easier to let it go? Because it wasn't I, something I you worked for? I didn't let it go for a long time after it was done. So at what point would you say, right here I realize, because this is the real question I wanted to ask. I waited all night to ask this question. At what point did you know that right here I'm not going to make it? After my car accident. See, a lot of people don't know about my car accident. I was in a car accident in California playing in the ABA. What year is that? 2004, I believe. Yeah. I was in a bad car accident after my first game. Tiny Archibald was my coach. I played in the ABA. Mm -hmm. Had a killer game. Tiny Archibald got a call after the game for me to get a 10-day contract to the Portland Trailblazers. We go to the dinner. We go to a team dinner. I leave the dinner, I get in a car accident. I get in a car accident, which left me dead on arrival. They wanted to amputate my leg. I was in a coma for nine days. Mm-hmm. Bounced back from all of that shit. Mm-hmm. Went to play in Kuwait. Yeah. Overweight, out of shape, everything. They, that was the first time I ever been cut from a team in my life. So it I was, it was there. over. So right there in Kuwait, you realize, I'm not going to them. So, so, Stat Baby brought that up about you. Yeah, she definitely brought I that did. up. I did. Because 
Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't even know that yeah, part. A lot of people don't know. That's, right. Not in my documentary. A lot of people don't know nothing about that car accident. You get what I'm saying? She definitely, Stab Baby definitely yeah. brought that up. So, touching on that, so after the car accident and then when you were recovering, you still played on other... I played, you know, I went to Kuwait. When I, after, mind you, I was in a wheelchair for two and right. a half years. After that, I bounced back, went to Kuwait. They sent me home. I never been sent home from nowhere, bro. Came back, then I started bouncing around. ABA, USBL, all that, all that shit in the states. Okay. So when after you, you know, bounced back and started playing, were you playing because you loved the game, or do you feel like nah, you had something to prove? No, nah, I was just getting calls because the dude that was representing me was getting calls. But then I was like, I'm done. I don't want to play basketball. I didn't want to see basketball. None of that shit. I wasn't involved with nothing. Okay. Do you feel like after that moment, and it's obviously if you, okay if you didn't, do you feel like after that moment you had resentment to other players and people still playing, or were you more comfortable with yourself after the fact? Nah, I mean, I never had resentment of the players. Mm-hmm. It was just the simple fact that I needed to get right with myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had to get my mental right after all of this shit. It was the LaRon shit, the car accident. They talking bad about you. You are, you always party. You got girls. You, you, you alcoholic. Mm-hmm. I had to get right with me. So did once you, I got right back with me, I was able to be like, yo, did I you see share my yourself? shit. Right. Huh? Did you see yourself as an alcoholic? I did. You Hell did? yeah. I was, in, I was in depression, became an alcoholic, a sex addict. Yes, for sure. Where did that start? Once I was in that car accident. Mm-hmm. So you wasn't drinking before the car accident? I was drinking, but not like heavy. Like I became, mm-hmm. I became an alcoholic. It's a difference. I was a drinker, but I became an alcoholic because of my depression and what I was going through with mm-hmm. me. It ain't had nothing to do with nobody else. Yes. So let me let me ask this because that this goes along with what you're saying when you say when you say you started drinking and all of those things, right? Um, if you if you could look back to you at around let's say seven to like twelve years old, what are you doing? I don't know. You don't I was remember? just being a kid. I was a kid because I was at home with my parents. I was just a kid running around the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? It, it had nothing to do with basketball or nothing at that time for me in mm-hmm. my life. That's I, what your dad and your and my mom. mom. My mom and my dad been married. I'm. I just turned forty. I just turned forty-one for Saturday. Just said you was forty. I just turned 41 Saturday, April 29th. So you just turned 40. I just turned 41 Saturday. You trying to act like you so much younger than niggas. You just said you turned 40 and you got busted. Let me tell you something. 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 I'm still closer than 40 than you, nigga. And I will have more points than you when you were the number one player in high school, bro. I called him, nigga. You got caught but I allow you to say that. You got caught capping about four times on the show, bro. You got caught no capping. I don't think you capping on purpose. I don't know. It's causing you to cap. I don't know. It's causing you to cap. You said you never played on the you guys got any other questions? Um, yo, what are you? Yeah. So, what do you got going on now? What do you got going on these yeah, days? Like I just, like, I, like I said, my birthday was Saturday. Man. Happy belated, just, man. Happy belated. I just, I know, how old did you turn? Forty-one. <laughs> <laughs> forty-one. 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 Forty-one, man. But now. Nah, um, I just had my fifth annual Lenny Cook Shoe Hoops Not Guns event in the Bronx and Bronx River Community Center. Um, yeah. I just I just love doing motivational speaking with these kids. I love. We said you just kids. did something with Allen Iverson I too. Did, I was yeah. just coaching at the Allen Iverson All American Game with uh, Stephen Jackson. Um, they just honored me with the Purpose Award. Man, that shit touched me so much. Pause. Um, that was crazy. It's just <laughs> he on point though. You gotta give him this credit. Nah, this, like this is what That's I love crazy. to do, man. When it comes to these kids, bro. Like I don't want these kids to have to go through what I went through and make the same mistakes that I made, bro. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, you know what I mean? Because it, it's a lot of mil- it's a lot of Lenny Cook stories, but people who scared to share their story. Right. You can't be sh- scared to share your story, bro. Because you can, you never know who you have, who you can help, bro. Yeah. Whether you at the top or the bottom, pause. But like, 
you gotta you gotta share your story, bro. And mm -hmm. I'm just blessed with the opportunity to share right. mine on it is what it is and whatever ever whatever else platform I can share it on, bro. Yeah. Bro. Uh, I just want to get my book done. I'm trying to get me my book done, which I know is gonna be a New York Times bestseller when it come out. You know what I mean? Right. Like that that's all I want, bro. So I gotta ask, when you see kids, since you're talking to kids like John Moran, and Mikey Williams getting in trouble with the media and stuff, what do you think about those situations? And then what advice would you give to them for? I mean, I just, I mean, I, the advice I can't give a millionaire advice that is not gonna take it. You get what I'm saying? I can share, I can share the information. Mm -hmm. I've been there. I mm -hmm. understand. You get what I'm saying? That's a but good way. Though. I like that. Even before that, I go to my brother. Sebastian Telfair did made a major mistake before these guys. You get what I'm saying? So it's like for me, it's just basically you gotta take heed. You gotta yeah. understand. You can't talk to somebody if they don't wanna listen. You get what I'm saying? Do if they going people, out one, if, Do you think people without the same life and money can give you advice? Give me advice? I mean just In any general. one of the athletes. I, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, for sure. It's up to you to listen. Yeah. And that's what I'm doing now. I listen. Mm -hmm. I've learned to listen because I didn't listen back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I understand. I know what it takes now. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So for me to speak and get honored uh, Friday night with the Purpose Award yeah. and then Stephen Jackson, I'm not even looking in the crowd when I'm being honored and Stephen Jackson tells me to look up and there's 1,500 people screaming and clapping saying, Lenny, yeah. I did my right. purpose. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that means a lot to me. That's dope. Yeah. I, I, I'm a firm believer of that people, people either, people make it because they either were very faithful or they were supposed to do it. And then when people don't make it, it's because they either wasn't purpose to do it or they was extremely unfaithful. There's the well, only I'm two both. reason people don't make I'm it. I'm both. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm here for a purpose. Yeah. And whether I made it or not to the NBA, that that wasn't my calling. My calling is no. The that's NBA. what I'm saying. Well, now that I'm hearing you speak, that's what I understand. You know, when when a person is not meant to do something, it wasn't gonna go that way anyway. It wasn't meant for me to because be in the NBA. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. Call. It wasn't. Do you see players like? I mean, everybody's much older now. But like, you know, the first 10 years, let's say, of 2003 to 2013, was it hard to watch like Melo, Chris Boss? It, well, it, it, it was tough. Bro, let me tell you something. My daughter, she'll be 13 May 5th, mm -hmm. right? right? My daughter used to go with me to the corner store, bro, and see the cooler with the Sprite, the, the big Sprite shit. Mm -hmm. And be like, Dad, that's LeBron right there. You know how much that hurt me? Right. That's, that's LeBron right there? Right. I had to get over that though. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it was never going to happen for me. Right. Not saying that it couldn't have been me. Right. Yeah. So because I, think, I messed that up. I you get what I'm saying? I think, no, I'm just saying, well, the reason I'm asking that, because it took me a long time to come out that shell. Right. And it's certain that. shit that I see, and I'd be like, today, and I'm good, and I'd be like, man, fuck them niggas. To I mean, this I day. still say yeah. it to, sometimes to, to myself. Day. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I was asking. Because at the end of the day, like, nigga, you know. Right, right. And I ain't even going to put it out there like that, Marvin and why, but nigga, you know. Right. Talk about it. Let's get me on the barbershop. Right. Huh? Right. Yeah. LeBron should have you come to his camps and all of those things, because I think it will be a phenomenal thing. It's just like when people see two people together and you know the history of Let me them tell you something. Everything. The way y'all got back together... Right. Mm -hmm. It's the way me and LeBron should get back together since we're going to talk about it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Everybody else, Melo, Melo always talk about me. Melo, I was just with Melo when they opened the Kip store in Williamsburg in Brooklyn. Yeah. Like these dudes, everybody else yeah. that was under us, they with us. They yeah. with me. They fuck with me. Yeah. I ain't heard you do nothing, bro. Yeah. Who are you talking about? His favorite player in the whole damn yeah, world. Yeah, the one that's better than <laughs> your favorite player. Oh, right. yeah. oh. I'm going to keep it 100. You about the only one in this room who think that money. Hey, ain't baby. nobody else in this room think that. Maybe Treasure, because she young. Let me tell you. <laughs> that's about it. You ain't got no votes on that in this I room. Can, I, I can guarantee you what's the number one in here. The nigga who came with you? <laughs> that's about it, man. I'm talking about, about six. 
<laughs> Six gonna go with Jordan. Six from the next album. That's why he got the number six. Yeah, six rings, nigga. Word, man. But yo, Lin, yo, thank you so much for fucking coming up, bro. You know you my brother. Anyway, my nigga, yes, I appreciate yes, you yes, coming. Yes, it's a great you. fucking thank interview, man. Nah, thank you And we y'all appreciate for you, me, man. Come on, yes. listen. What, what we started to do is originally is uh, uh, Joe Keem's coming up in a couple weeks. So I wanted to have you guys together. Maybe we'll invite you back down I when will, he comes I, if you're available. I, I'm mm-hmm. here. Let's put it together, I'm man. I'm here. I'll definitely be here with him because that's my he dog. He speaks highly of you. He loves you. Dog. He, loves, he know he, he's down here, too. So his schedule just wasn't permitting, but... He, he fucks with you. He yeah, loves you nah, too, that's man. my bro. That's yep. my little bro, for yep. sure. And when if people want to connect with you and get you to come to camps and motivational speaking, where do they, you where, can, where do they get you Instagram, at? Instagram, I am Lenny Cook. You can hit my email, Lenny, Lenny375 at gmail.com. Tell the people in this camera so that they know where to get contact you at. I am Lenny Cook on Instagram, Lenny Cook on Facebook, Lenny375 is my Gmail. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for sharing your story and being very positive about it. So, with that, I'm proud of you, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. really it's proud like, of you, man. It's really dope. Really I appreciate y'all because you've bro. taken situations that a lot of people wouldn't even speak about it, and then you switched it around and made it positive and use it to uplift other people, which is dope. So, appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you for being here, and with that, we'll be right back. Four nine. After last night performance, we're gonna do this again? No. Not tonight. I don't think so. <laughs> and make sure you close the door behind you. When I take the yeah. pussy up, babe. When I take the pussy up, babe. When I take the pussy up, babe. I'm Rico fucking strong. Took that horse power oh, and told the girl to yeah. get it up. Get it up. Hey, man. Welcome back. Okay, so we do still have our special guest here because we have a couple questions left. Let me ask you this, because I, I, like I said, I'm LeBron. That's number, a safe way. I got LeBron. <laughs> I got LeBron number two all time on my list for sure. Do you think he's the best player in the NBA today? No. Where do you rank him in the NBA today? Number two. Who's number one? I got the light skin I got go. A, I got nah. I got a staff. Yeah, see, no. you no, knew no, who no, I was no, talking no. about. Yeah, because you said light skin. Okay, who you but got? No, 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 no. I got to go with MB, bro. I got so, to. So, 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 so you say MB then LeBron? I got to go. I I may put LeBron three this year. Okay, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, you, you're being very indecisive. No, I'm not. Who's I'm being honest. Honest. Who's, I'm, I'm being being actually, honest. I'm actually, who, who, I, give I me your top four players this year in the NBA. In, in, MB, in order. Any order? In the order, and, and, yeah, and, and listen. You don't have and a all right, so let, I go let, order. let me take this question real quick. If everybody's healthy right now, I'm just saying. I know it's the players. I'm saying yeah. if everybody's healthy, because you know Kawhi, everybody. Yeah, gets yeah, yeah. Your top five players in order this year. I'm going Embiid, Jokic, John Morant, LeBron, and I could put anybody five. So leave out the Greek freak and Kevin Durant. Oh, uh, yeah, right now. Kevin no, Durant I said, I count said, right now. He was hurt too long. Yo, listen. We you said this year. No, I'm talking about if everybody's healthy. Just period. Not yeah. the if everybody's healthy, fuck healthy, bro, I'm going LeBron number one. Number one? You got your motherfucking And then I'm going KD number two. Wow. T- how much you was drinking Man, when you was drinking? Then I'm going drinking. Yo, when you yeah. was drinking, you how said, much you was drinking? I, don't, I didn't drink nothing today. No, when you was drinking. 
You keep doing this shit, yo. How much was you drinking back when you was drinking, my nigga? Same <laughs> with that. With that. Very, very, very bold take. <laughs> <laughs> nah, oh my God. Nah, listen, <laughs> I don't trust Boston. I'm gonna give you my picks, man. Listen, I'm not Tatum going. I'm, yeah, nah. I, I'm nah, not, Tatum is Tatum second. Different. I know. Give no, us your, I, give I us your five just, and no, then. No, no, I'm just. I'm, I want all of us to make a pick before we wrap it up. I'm okay. saying who you think gonna come out the East and West. I'm gonna just go with. I was with Milwaukee. I'm, I'm really indecisive on the East, man. You can't say was. I know. This shit is over. I'm, I'm brainstorming. Right now. Right now, yeah. playoffs. I know. I'm thinking. If I you... don't like the whole East. I just hate the East. The whole East. Because Golden State is my pick until they lose. How Clay... the fuck you hate the East? You from hard. No, I love the East living in the East. <laughs> Furthermore, my team is the Globetrotters. We never lose. Fuck is you talking about? I know, because y'all, y'all play the niggas in the green jersey. Niggas don't want to play us, nigga. Niggas, y'all play the niggas in the green jersey. The fucking <laughs> shit I was doing to you in the park, nigga. <laughs> this shit right here. <laughs> but I go, realistically, we go to the East, I'm going to have to go with, I got. I would say right now Philly, and I don't go against Golden State until Klay Thompson is not in the championship. He's been in six straight championships. Two, two years they didn't go. He didn't play. So I go with yeah. Golden State until Klay Thompson is not in the championship. So I have Golden State. And Philadelphia at the moment. And then who's your final pick? I got Golden State and Philly if Jimmy Butler doesn't come back. That's tough. That was tough. tough All the niggas is different. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Jamal Murray is really. I just told you. No, say it again. I'm going going with the Lakers in Philly. You are shut down. Interesting takes. You know what's crazy? (laughs) I like the Lakers a lot because Lakers was in in the in the play-in. And yeah. I like what LeBron is fucking doing at this age. I really, like I said, LeBron, I'm only arguing just to motherfucking argue. But <laughs> I fuck with you, my nigga. But at the end of the day, that would be amazing. But I just can't go against Golden State. And KD, man, we got to get like two seconds quick. Yeah, no, KD. Booker got to pass the fucking ball. Yeah. They real thin on the bench. No, yeah. Booker has to pass the basketball. Did you not watch the game last night? I didn't yeah. have time. I Booker has to pass the ball. I hope KD I shows up because I can't lie for him. Uh, KD do can't that. show up if he don't we put don't, the ball in yeah. his hand. With that, KD, KD, with we, that. Both of these niggas bugging me. Niggas tell me this, nigga. I gotta tell the truth. You know, you family, nigga. I don't got no KD. I don't do no KD slander. No, we're not <laughs> slandering. We're just saying if, if, if it get out so, of control. So you acting like Chris Paul ain't get hurt for the eight million time and got in the third Chris quarter. Chris Paul is always hurt. All right, exactly, and it's always all a problem. State, all state, all state. Help us out. Help us out. All state. Well, interesting takes. Thanks for y'all's choices. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. And with that, that wraps this episode. We'll see you for the next one. Yeah.